Hi, and welcome to May's editorial video. This month, the focus is on RPA, Robotic Process Automation in Hospitality. If you haven't already checked out the article from Stephen Burke at RoboSizeMe, don't forget to have a look at that and also listen to the podcast where we talk about this in much more detail and how RPA can positively impact our industry. And there's also the infographic giving that high level visual perspective. The hospitality industry is experiencing tremendous growth and increased competition in today's fast paced business environment. To remain competitive, hotels and other hospitality businesses are starting to turn to robotic process automation, RPA. And this is to enhance their operations and boost their efficiency. RPA involves using software robots to automate repetitive and mundane tasks, which frees the employees to focus on more valuable tasks that require human skills. This video is going to delve into the benefits of RPA in the hospitality industry, its potential impact on staffing, and how to introduce RPA without negatively affecting staff morale and daily operations. Cost savings. By automating repetitive tasks, RPA reduces the need for manual labor, resulting in significant cost savings for businesses. Hotels can reallocate these saved resources to improve other aspects of their operations. Increased efficiency. RPA streamlines processes, enabling hotels to complete tasks faster and more accurately. This leads to enhanced operational efficiency and increased customer satisfaction. Improved accuracy. Software robots are less prone to errors than we humans, and this ensures that tasks are completed correctly and reduces the risk of costly mistakes. Enhanced customer experience. RPA allows hotels to improve their customer service by automating those mundane tasks, freeing up staff to focus on creating memorable guest experiences directly with their guest. Scalability. RPA solutions can be easily scaled to accommodate fluctuations in demand, ensuring that hotels can efficiently manage their operations during peak and off-peak seasons. As with any technological advancement, introducing RPA into the hospitality industry does raise concerns about the potential impact on staffing and the staff's morale. However, when implemented strategically, RPA can create new opportunities for employees rather than replace them. And here's a few strategies to ensure a smooth transition to RPA. Firstly, communicate the benefits. Clearly communicate the advantages of RPA to your staff, emphasizing that automation is going to help them focus on more meaningful tasks and improve their overall job satisfaction. Upskill and reskill. Invest in training programs to help the employees acquire new skills that enables them to take on new roles and responsibilities that can be then created by the introduction of RPA. Involve employees in the process. Including the team in the planning and the implementation stages of RPA adoption will help them feel more involved and accepting of the changes. Monitor and address the team's concerns. Keep an open line with communication of your employees to address any concerns and ensure that smooth transition. Pros. Cost savings. Increased efficiency. Improved accuracy. Enhanced customer experience. Scalability. Cons. The cost of implementing RPA can be high, especially for small businesses. Technical complexity, RPA systems can be complex and may require specialized skills to implement and maintain. Resistance to change. Staff may be resistant to the change, fearing job displacement or a loss of control over their work. Several technical solutions can support RPA implementation in the hospitality industry. Cloud-based RPA. Cloud-based RPA platforms offer a cost-effective and scalable solution that can be accessed from anywhere, making it an attractive option for hotels. AI and machine learning. Integrating AI and machine learning capabilities into RPA solutions can also enhance performance by enabling the software robots to learn and adapt to new, new tasks over time. APIs and integrations. Ensure that your RPA solution can seamlessly integrate with your existing systems 
and software through APIs to maximize efficiency, minimizing disruption to your operations. Customizable RPA solutions. Opt for RPA solutions that can be customized to suit the specific needs of your hospitality business. This helps ensure a smooth and effective implementation. Here's a few steps to follow when procuring RPA solutions for your hospitality business. Identify key processes for automation. Assess your business processes to determine which tasks are suitable for automa automation. Focus on repetitive rule-based tasks that do not require human intervention or judgment. Research RPA vendors. Evaluate the different vendors considering factors such as cost, features, ease of integration, scalability, and of course, customer support. Request proposals. Request detailed proposals from your shortlisted vendors, which outlines the cost, features, and implementation processes of their RPA solutions. Conduct a proof of concept before committing fully to a chosen vendor. Conduct a POC to test their RPA solution in your business environment. This will help you evaluate the solution's effectiveness and compatibility with your other hotel systems. Set expectations of the vendor. Once you have selected a vendor, clearly define the scope of work, pricing, support services, and other relevant terms and conditions needed for a successful rollout. Implement and monitor. Collaborate with your chosen RPA vendor to implement the solution, ensuring that staff members are adequately trained and supported throughout the process. Continuously monitor the performance of your RPA system, making adjustments as necessary to optimize its effectiveness. I started to notice this trend um, with uh, companies in the insurance and the finance sector, um, manufacturing sectors and um, healthcare space even that were uh, taking advantage of this technology called uh, robotic process automation or RPA. And the idea is to take tasks that are very manual, uh, oftentimes repetitive, that people like knowledge workers or, or uh, any staff are doing on a computer, right? And you can take, uh, using this uh, RPA software, you can build workflows and you can connect the RPA uh, solution to these different IT systems and, and different processes through reading emails or, or PDFs or invoices and things like that. And you can uh, take some actions based on those. And the actions can be to... Uh, read a bunch of data and summarize it, or the actions can be to um, approve something like an invoice, for example, for payment, if it meets a certain set of pre-existing conditions. Um, you can also read a whole bunch of data um, and uh, uh, put that somewhere. So like into another system using an API, or you can put it even into a um, uh, a business intelligence tool like uh, Power BI or something like that. So there's ton, tons of actions you can do. And I, from working in the hospitality industry for a long time, I know that hotels have a lot of these operationally vital yet highly manual processes. And when you speak to people that work in hotels, they always have like this list of things that are their least favorite tasks. And the least favorite task usually involves some kind of, a, uh, especially if you're in finance or front office or reservations, distribution, it's something that you have to do with a huge spreadsheet or an extra net or something like that. These are all great candidates for, for process automation, right? For RPA. So how does RPA revolutionize the hospitality industry in recent years? Well, it goes to um, helping the hotels solve staffing challenges. Now, staffing challenges may be if you can't hire staff for a given position, or it may be that you have work that needs to be done that is not interesting to human beings, right? That bores them, that makes them not motivated to, to go to work or something. Um, and the hotels have a lot of processes like this. Uh, so the first step in, in the RPA revolution is really to free staff to work on higher value tasks by automating this stuff that's like uh, highly repetitive, boring and things like that. Um, the cool thing about 
the hospitality industries, you know, with all of our different departments within a hotel, there's almost no departments that RPA cannot help in. Uh, so, for example, we talked a few minutes ago about um, the accounting or the finance use cases, right? So one of those things is uh, invoice approval. That's that's quite straightforward. Another one is uh, updating uh, financial statements based on some information that's coming from uh, a property management system or a point of sale uh, system on a previous day. It could be combining data uh, before people come into work um, of all of the revenue producing systems in a given property. Uh, and with a large resort, that can be many. You can have the property management system, the point of sale system, the sales and catering system. You can have cabana management system for the uh, for the beach or the you know the the sun area of the resort. You can have um, an activity system for golf and for for skiing. You can of course have have spa. Uh, so gathering all the data from all those different systems and organizing them in a way that's that's uh, kind of common so that the uh, the management can look at a um, a unified statement of revenue production is, is really important. I guess the first key benefit is like uh, helping with staff, um, giving them more meaningful work. That's a feedback that a lot of our customers uh, give to us is that by removing this thing that the staff hates and maybe one hour a day or maybe many hours a day, you make that staff member more productive because they can immediately focus on the higher value task or they can focus on uh, doing some guest services uh, stuff, working with the guests, improving guest satisfaction. Um, and those are the things that people really get into the hospitality industry to do. Um, they don't get in the hospitality industry to spend four hours a day copying data from one spreadsheet to another, right? Um, those, those are things that, uh, that, that are really important, um, but there's a lot more. So for example, one of the automations that we have actually automates the association between a menu item in a point of sale um, uh, platform and the cost of the supply. So uh, the automation looks at both systems and when it sees the cost of a certain supply item, going beyond you know a certain amount let's say plus minus 10 percent the automation can automatically pick up and affect the price on the point of sale system so that way if you have a certain ingredient uh in your um in a in a menu item and the price doubles uh, you're not waiting for a human to go through and figure out that they have to change that price it just automatically populates that through to the point of sale system um, that's, that has a real impact on the revenue. Um, another area, uh, last year, um, especially when the inflation was really out of control, you had a lot of requirements for changing uh, package item pricing, especially like breakfast or something like that, um, as soon as possible. And if you have thousands of hotels, that can be a very daunting task. So one of the automations that we built was actually going and updating this pricing uh, so that um, uh, the pricing was staying more in line with inflation uh, and, and it was contributing uh, definitely to, to the hotel's uh, um, bottom line. Another area, so uh, payment reconciliations and, and commission reconciliations are very important. Um, one of the habits that we see a lot of hotels do is that when they get a request for payment from an OTA or, or a bed bank or something like that, they have this internal number that they look at and they go, OK, if it's plus minus one and a half or two percent from this internal expected number, we just pay it. We don't check it. Right. Because they don't have the manpower to, to check all of these things. But actually what we've uncovered is that this is costing, especially larger groups, tens of thousands of dollars every single month um, in revenue that they would otherwise uh, get. And uh, so this is an area. Um, that's huge. Like any area where you have a lot of reconciliation that you need to manually process, this is something that's a great candidate for, for RPA. And in that case, the, the automations pay for themselves, like usually in the first month. Um, other areas, uh, uploading data to, to extranets, whether this is loyalty points 
or whether it's travel agent commissions, um, there's a lot of information that can be just uh, automated. So you can take this data out of your reservation system, have a very clear idea of what um, your uh, production was from these particular channels in a previous month, and then automatically reconcile uh, all of those payments. Um, it's a it's a force multiplier, really. Um, we've seen uh, uh, customers that they have um, many, many different bank accounts that they have to deal with on a day to day basis. So you have one person that's downloading 100 bank account statements every day and filing them into an online system. This is a great thing for automation. And what happens? Do those people go away? Absolutely not. Those people get deployed on those tasks that management has been asking for, for months and sometimes years, you know, produce this analysis so I can see what's happening um, that they never had time to do because they're stuck on these important, very important, but like regular operation tasks that the business needs to survive, but it's not really adding a lot of value. It's just a human acting like a robot, right? So let's replace those humans with the automation and, uh, and, and let the people uh, focus on tasks that only they can do. I think the biggest one that um, everybody worries about is that, you know, is this going to take my job or is this going to take my team? Um, because you are going to have to pay uh, for the automation from, from some place, right? Um, but what we see is that this is never the case. It's not like you automate something and then suddenly you fire the entire team. Um, it's really about moving people on to, to higher value tasks because you've got all of these tasks, uh, like we just talked about um, downloading bank accounts or something. Somebody has to do this. It's absolutely critical to get this done uh, from a finance perspective and a record keeping perspective and so on. You need it. Do you need a human to do it? No. Well, what can you? What's the next best alternative for that human to do if they don't have to do this boring but absolutely manual task? Well, you can have them do financial projections that you might need to to run your business, and that's a much higher value uh, item. Uh, another automation that we've uh, recently deployed looks into error logs uh, that are produced by uh, um, different systems on the hotel, right? Because the IT team has to be aware if something's going in the error log that they need to take immediate action on. Well, that's a time consuming task because you might have a thousand error log entries a day for even a small uh, group of hotels. Does everyone require human intervention? Does, does every log entry? Of course not. You have to separate what are the warnings? What are the errors? You know, warnings you can probably toss out, except you may want to look at cumulative warnings because they can be indicative of some failure that's about to happen, right? Like a disk space is starting to run out or something on a, on a queuing system. Um, and then you have to look at errors and those errors can be classified in different severities, right? So in a lot of places you have um, IT staff and bearing in mind that a, a small group of hotels, 20, 30 hotels, they don't have many IT staff. So you might be spent having one guy or one person spending a considerable number of hours per week just looking through error logs. Is that a really a good use of that person's time? Wouldn't it be better having them focus on something that, that the business really needs, uh, implementing uh, uh, some enhancements to the reservation system or looking for a new reservation system or a new uh, CRM and, and, and defining requirements instead of doing these you know, really tactical uh, but necessary uh, uh, tasks? So this is a great candidate uh, for automation, um, because what the, the automation can do, what the RPA can do is sift through these thousands of, of entries looking for some patterns that are previously defined. And then when it finds some, it can just summarize them and ship this report to the IT person of the five or 10 key items that they need to investigate. So now they can really spend their time focused on, on a very important and a very meaningful task rather than just sifting through data. Uh, that's a, a really important one. Um, other areas, um, you don't have to go full auto on day one. So robotic process automation generally has two kinds of um, 
uh, automations. There's roughly called attended and unattended. So unattended is full auto, right? The automation just does all the work. Of course, you can put some criteria in there that says if you encounter this uh, unexpected situation, then stop the automation, uh, make a note, and, and, and don't complete the task. That, that's normal best practice implementations that you have to do to make sure that the automation doesn't do anything you don't want it to. But sometimes it takes a while to trust the automation, right? And, and that, uh, or, or there's other times where you absolutely need a human in the middle. And, and that's where you bring in what's called attended automation. So attended automation is like this symbiosis of, of human and machine, right? The machine does the legwork, could be data gathering, could be sifting the data, could be analyzing the data and so on. But before it does anything, you might want a human to approve it. An example of this could be uh, automating uh, review uh, responses. So the automation could write the review in, in some language, uh, in chat GPT, for example. Um, and what it can do first is write it in the local language, have somebody at the hotel approve it, because it's a lot faster for somebody just to read it in their native language and then, um, and then approve it. Uh, and then convert the language into the language, convert the text into the language of the guest and post that on Google or post it on booking.com or something like that. Um, another area could be to um, do some financial operations where you want the, uh, uh, the controller to, to approve it before moving ahead. The benefit here is that you're taking something that, you know, requires a hundred percent human down to something that can, requires 10% human. So that one person is gonna be able to do a lot more of that process than they uh, they could before. And the rest of the people on the team can focus on higher value tasks. Robotic process automation offers significant benefits for our industry, including cost savings, increased efficiency, and improved customer satisfaction. However, it is essential to consider the potential impact on staffing and the staff morale when introducing RPA into the business. Hotels can successfully integrate RPA into their operations without negatively impacting on the team's morale and daily operations. Additionally, exploring various technical solutions and following a structured procurement process can ensure that your RPA implementation is both effective and beneficial for your business. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful as you begin your journey into RPA solutions. Until next time, it's bye for now.